AJ Greer stole the hearts of Bruins fans with a kiss of the spoked bee during a win on Saturday night over the Arizona Coyotes. We also have some positive and negative injury updates and a game tonight against the Florida Panthers that we will preview here as well. So let's get into today's Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Monday, October 17th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts including YouTube, so please do open up your podcast app, go to YouTube, search out Locked On Boston Bruins, smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. If you're on Twitter and Instagram, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. I'm a lifelong Bruins fan. I've been covering this team for various outlets for about 17 years now, hosting this podcast for three years, and we are well into season four after the Bruins defeated the Arizona Coyotes on Saturday night in their home opener. And one of the guys who stole the show was new forward A.J. Greer, who after scoring his first goal as a Bruin, circled the Arizona net, grabbed his sweater, and laid a big juicy kiss on the spoked bee, and the TD Garden crowd just went wild, as did all of us watching from home. You know, there's a few ways to endear yourself to a new fan base. You can drop the gloves, you can drop a massive hit, you can of course score a goal, but the Selly just added so much to it, and AJ Greer just completely understood the assignment here. New bench boss Jim Montgomery said it was a symbol of how much Greer appreciates putting on the black and gold. He said it echoes what he's been talking about, about, you know, how special it is to be a Bruin. The new coach sees it. Very fortunate to be in the locker room. Greer sees it too. And it's awesome that he's showing that emotion. It's a connection that everybody can understand how special it is to be a Bruin. And especially so on a night when they are beginning the home schedule with a win over the Arizona Coyotes. Not a traditional rival to open up your home schedule by any means, but it was a win and a special one, an evening that Greer will not soon forget after he scored another goal, an empty netter, to seal the victory for the Bruins. He said even in the preseason, he was telling his fiance, his parents, how energetic TD Garden is and how fun it is to play there. Playing for the Bruins is very special because it's an original six team, such a special organization, and he's grateful for the position that he's in right now to be in the lineup and a contributing member here early on. He said he was overwhelmed when he scored that goal. He just wanted to show his love for the Bruins, for the fans, because without them, the energy is not there. Such a great building, an awesome evening, and getting his name introduced at the beginning was awesome as well. Now Greer was playing on his off wing against the Coyotes as Trent Frederick entered the lineup in place of an injured Jake DeBrusque. 
uh, with Trent Frederick going on the left side of that third line with Charlie Coyle manning the middle. Uh, it was a pretty effective line as they displayed a blend of skill and strength. Arizona was on their heels pretty much every time they hit the ice. And uh, they combined for quite a few points. Uh, Greer was a plus four, picked up an assist on a goal scored by Charlie Coyle. It was a three-point night for Greer, his first ever multi-point outing. And it's good enough for me to give him Big Bear of the Night, just filling the stat sheet. 12 minutes and 45 seconds of ice time. He had two goals, one assist for three points, four shots on goal, six hits, one block, just completely filling the stat sheet. If you had him, for whatever reason, on your fantasy team, it was a good night. Charlie Coyle played a strong game. One goal, one assist for two points. Nick Foligno added a goal and an assist for two points, reaching 500 points for his career. And Pavel Zaka also had a two-point night for the Boston Bruins. Uh, just a great effort from the bottom six, and that's what's going to be so important for this team uh, in order to be successful this season. Um, Greer said he doesn't think of it as third and fourth line because anyone can play anywhere in the Bruins lineup, according to him anyways. Felino's line did a great job playing down low, playing over the puck. Third line was great and uh, really good chemistry displayed there. Felino, Nosik, Lauko playing some disruptive hockey in their own right. And... Um, yeah, it was a very effective evening for the bottom six. Greer also, like I said, showed off a physical side. Game high six hits. Getting into it with Liam O'Brien, who we'll talk about here in a moment when it comes to the injury section of the, uh, of the game. But just a really strong effort all around. And the Bruins now displaying quite... A bit of depth over the first couple games. In fact, they have had, uh, I think they've scored 10 goals, and they have all. AJ Greer is the only player who scored more than one goal. You have goals from Krejci, Pasternak, Zaka, Felino, Coyle, Lindholm, Bergeron, Derek Forbort chipped in, Taylor Hall. Just getting contributions up and down the lineup, and uh, it's great to see. That's going to be a key for the Bruins this season is their depth scoring. So A.J. Greer earning Big Bear of the Night honors for filling the stat sheet. That smooch of the spoked B, and um, he, Charlie Coyle, Nick Foligno, Trent Frederick, these are guys that are going to have to step up with some key forwards out of the lineup. We're going to talk about some injury updates here in segment two, but first, a quick word about Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie, friends. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the one thing that matters. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 seven professional monitoring agents who always have your back. Again, 24 seven professional monitoring, their agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency even if you're not home or can't be reached. Their monitoring experts use proprietary advanced response technology to visually confirm when a break-in is real so you can get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. 
Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. There's simply no safe like Simply Safe. Now, as encouraging a win this was for the Boston Bruins, again, it was over the lowly Arizona Coyotes, so you can read into that what you will. There's some tougher opponents on deck this week for sure. Uh, but it wasn't all good news for the Boston Bruins as Liam O'Brien, who I mentioned earlier, levied a hard hit on Brandon Carlo in the first period that forced the Bruins defenseman out of the game with what was called an upper body injury. Looked a lot like the kind of injury that we saw him suffer at the hands of Tom Wilson a couple years ago when his head was hit into the glass and he missed some time with a concussion. Brandon Carlo does have an unfortunately extensive concussion history and we hope that this isn't the case this time around but it sure does look like it. Trent Frederick stepped up, dropped the gloves with O'Brien. Um, Frederick and Greer both jawing the Coyotes forward at the end of the game as well. Montgomery was pleased with Frederick's response, with his effort, uh, being physical, being aggressive, and um, dropping the gloves with O'Brien certainly endeared himself to the fans and to his teammates as well. There was no update on Carlo immediately after the game, but in not a great sign, the Bruins recalled defenseman Dan Renouf from Providence on Sunday. Uh, the 28-year-old skated in four games with the Red Wings last season. He's appeared in 23 career NHL games with the Red Wings and the Avalanche. Um, he was signed to a two-year entry-level deal with Detroit in March of 2016 after uh, not being drafted. And so he could be in the lineup this evening. In fact, he practiced in the top six with the Bruins on Sunday. So a bit of an indication that he will indeed be making his Bruins debut as a left-hand shot. Uh, I believe Mark Diver, who covers the Providence Bruins, indicated that he was recalled likely because of his uh, penalty-killing strength down in Providence that was displayed already. So unfortunate for Carlo, and we, of course, wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, on a more positive note, Brad Marchand returned to practice on Sunday as well. Not an indication that he's ready to play, but um, a good sign that he's progressing well in his rehab from double hip surgery this past offseason. It had been four months uh, since he was able to practice, and he said it gets tiring being held out, but it felt good to be back on the ice, and um, his participation in practice moving forward will be decided on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, there's an optional morning skate slated for today, He's likely to take the ice with his teammates for the second consecutive day. Just kind of taking it day by day, seeing how he feels, and um, hopefully progress as well. No setbacks. Um, he dealt with a lot of discomfort in his hips over the past couple seasons. He was a bit nervous how long it was going to take to get 
back on the ice to get into game shape. Uh, still a little bit off, but he feels great and is really happy with his progress. Montgomery did say Carlo is better or was better Sunday than they were expecting. Uh, he's still not going to be ready to play tonight, and there's going to be no rush for sure based on the nature of head injuries. But better news than they were expecting. Um, they felt in camp that Renouf was a steady, stay-at-home guy that can defend really well and help break out the puck, similar to Carlo in a way. And uh, that's why he was the guy that was called up. Matt Grizzlick practiced in full again on Sunday. He's unlikely to play over the next few games, but could be a week or two away. Jake DeBrusque isn't expected to be out more than 10 days. Uh, he's progressing as well. No definitive timeline. Um... Just depends on how quickly the area heals and he'll be right back. But again, not longer than a few days. Now they do have Anton Strahlman ready, willing to step into the lineup. Unfortunately, he's still working through visa issues. He signed a one-year, $1 million contract last week. And the visa issue could be nearing a, a solution. The blue liner must travel outside of the United States to have the issue resolved. The Bruins just so happen to be traveling to Ottawa for a game tomorrow night. Um, he's going to travel early today so that he can get the visa issue rectified and hopefully that will expedite things a little more. So that's the latest on all the injured Bruins. McAvoy was out there skating as well, and um, he, Marchand, still a ways away. Grizzlick, DeBrusque, perhaps next week, and of course, when it comes to Brandon Carlo, you just have to take things one day at a time, because it's, uh, yeah, you just never know with those kind of injuries. I mentioned earlier, Nick Foligno picked up his 500th career point. Great to see him getting off to a good start. He said he's feeling good, healthy, and what's been the most fun is that all lines have been contributing so far. Uh, every time they step over the boards, the identity that they have is exactly what they preached in training camp, and it's been fun to be a part of. Foligno, like I mentioned, a goal and an assist. He's got two points through two games. And that's obviously uh, a big improvement over the 13 points he managed in 64 games last season. He's already halfway to matching his goal total from last season. I'm going to tee up tonight's game against the Florida Panthers in segment three. But I wanted to thank you once more for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day. Now make your second listen, the Game to Game NHL podcast. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So tonight, the Bruins back in action against the Florida Panthers. Florida is off to a perfect 2-0 start, same as our Boston Bruins, uh, the Bruins also matched by the Detroit Red Wings with a perfect 2-0 start to begin the season in the Atlantic Division. The Bruins have a plus-six goal differential, which ties them with Detroit 
and puts them ahead of Florida in that respect. On tomorrow's podcast, we will take a look at the Atlantic Division power rankings, uh, but here's what you need to know about the Florida Panthers. They, of course, very talented team. They had an extraordinary 2021-2022, and they did have a pretty big shakeup over the summer by trading Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Weger to the Florida, Pan- or sorry, to the Calgary Flames in exchange for Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk leads the team in scoring at the moment with two goals and an assist through two games. Obviously, Alexander Barkov is still a two-way force to be reckoned with. And I do think the Panthers are a bit susceptible for a step back this season. Uh, Again, they lost those two key players. They did add Kachuk, but they're also without Anthony Duclair, who had a strong season. And you just can't underestimate the loss of Uyghur, who was one of their top defensemen last season. They do have some guys to keep an eye on that have yet to record a point this season who could be due for a breakout. Sam Bennett, Carter Verhege, Rudolph's Balsers. These are guys that they're counting on currently in their top six to carry some offense. Sam Reinhart only with one point so far. Uh, So they could be due for a breakout tonight against the Boston Bruins and Linus Allmark, who will be in net uh, for the Bruins tonight. The Panthers, positive possession team at 5-on-5 so far this season, 53.21 advantage, while the Bruins, 55.49. That number was boosted by the game over the uh, the Coyotes, who are just uh, abysmal possession-wise. 38.33 through two games this season. Better only than the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Philadelphia Flyers. It's a bit early for these numbers, of course. New Jersey leads the NHL in shot attempt differential 67%, but they have lost both games that they have played so far. So take those stats with a bit of a grain of salt here early on in the season. Bruins, Panthers, probably looking at Sergei Bobrovsky in net tonight after Spencer Knight played the other day. Bobrovsky uh, had the better of the two starts. And the Bruins will be looking to continue their strong start to the season as they embark on a pretty busy week here. They play the Panthers tonight. Then they travel to Ottawa to play the Senators on Tuesday. That will be Ottawa's home opener. They're 0-2 to start the season, so you know they're going to come out strong. Then the Bruins will return home for the first of four straight home games. Uh, Thursday versus the Ducks, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And then they play the Wild on Saturday afternoon. Uh, A Wild team that's gotten off to a slow start in their own right. So that's what's coming up for the Bruins this weekend. Uh, The Providence Bruins got off to a good start this weekend. Fabian Lysel uh, putting up some points. And, you know, could be a candidate to be recalled sooner than later. I had a chance to go see... Matt Poitra and the Guelph Storm on Friday evening. Uh, Very rough weekend for Poitra and the Storm. The game I went to, they were beat 6-1. to One One of their best players, Sasha Pastajov, a Ducks prospect, uh, was tossed for slew footing, which drew an automatic two-game suspension. So he was out for the other two games they played this weekend. They lost both of those games. And on Sunday, Poitra himself was assessed a major in a game of misconduct for a slew foot. Again, that carries an automatic two-game suspension, so he will be out of the lineup for 
a game this coming Friday against the Oshawa Generals, which features another Bruins prospect in Brett Harrison. I had planned to go down to that game to see that head-to-head matchup. Not sure if I will now, uh, but uh, not a stellar weekend for Poitra and uh, the Guelph Storm. Uh, a lot of good people covering Bruins prospects out there. Uh, be sure to catch up on what they're doing. But again, good good start for the Providence Bruins, especially Fabian Lysel. And uh, I would not mind seeing him up with the Bruins at some point this season, especially if these injury issues continue. Uh, just checking on the Scoring leaders and Fabian Lysel indeed leads Providence with four points through two games, one goal, and three assists. So great start to his pro career. That's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. A lot to cover this morning as we prepare for a busy week. And I thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day. Check out the Locked On NHL Fantasy Hockey Podcast next. Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone bring you all the advice you need to stay ahead of the competition available wherever you get podcasts. I hope you all had a great weekend. Mine was full of taking the boys to basketball, hockey, our oldest Celebrated his birthday at a virtual reality place yesterday, which was very fun. I got to participate in that. Played some Creed boxing. This game called Arizona Sunshine, where you just shoot zombies, which was super fun and therapeutic for some reason. And then, of course, finished Rings of Power. Watched House of the Dragon. And uh, started watching Welcome to Wrexham as well, which I know that I'm going to love uh, so check that out if you haven't already. The the show about Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney buying a football team over in Wales. We'll be back tomorrow to recap tonight's game against the Panthers. The Atlantic Division Power Rankings. And uh, later on this week, I'm going to introduce a new segment called Cup Check. Kind of a glass half full, glass half empty on the Bruins. And a look at the top teams likely to compete for the Stanley Cup this season and where the Bruins stack up among the top competitors. So that's it. Happy Monday, friends. We'll talk to you again tomorrow here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.